Hello everybody and welcome back. It is good to talk to all of you again today and I'm providing you with a short little Duca Delsta update. So this morning actually I released a video of the Duca Delsta and you know I thought she was a reasonably well balanced ship. Uh, she had her strengths, she had her weaknesses and I thought that you know she did require a bit of a peculiar style of play perhaps. But all in all I didn't really find her to be that broken, she was kind of unique in her own little way, and I was quite happy with that ship being in the game. But unfortunately, uh, Wargaming doesn't see it that way, I'm guessing, because obviously they want to make as much money, I'm guessing, as humanly possible. So they went ahead and they literally buffed the ship in pretty much every conceivable category with the exception of HE. So remember I talked about Turret Traverse being a little bit slow, that got buffed. Used to be 30 seconds stock, now it's 25.7 seconds stock, so Turret Traverse is better. Uh, rudder Shift, I mean, she already had amazing agility, right? I mentioned this yesterday, uh, or sorry, in the last video, that she had really, really good agility. Well, now her Rudder Shift time is going down again. So it's now 6.7 seconds from the original 8.4 seconds, which means that her current stock Rudder Shift is faster than her Rudder Shift... Uh, when she was, you know, on the old 8.4 with the rudder shift module. <laughs> so she's even more agile now. And you think that's it. That's not the only thing. Um, remember yesterday I mentioned that if you wanted to play, let's say, passive, you might want to bring defense fire. If you want to play more aggressive, bring hydro. Well, now she has both of them. She has both hydro and she has defensive fire. So, yay. Um, and then finally, one last, actually two last things. One of the changes is not anything you can see numbers-wise. Her um, rudder protection, her steering gear protection has been improved, so she's less likely to lose her rudder. I did notice that she did have a tendency of losing her rudder quite a bit, uh, but they improved that. But that I think I would have expected anyways. Um, and then, of course, the final big change is the torpedoes. So she has 4.5 kilometer torpedoes, which I mentioned were pretty good if you want to be aggressive, um, if you want to get up close. All those torpedoes were very, very workable. Not really all that great for range, but hey, I mean, you know, if you're playing her aggressive and getting up close and getting around islands and stuff like that, the torpedoes worked. Well, the torpedoes got completely changed. Now she comes with a 12 kilometer set of torpedoes. That's right, the Italian tier 6 cruiser now has the longest range torpedoes in the game. Now they are slow, right? They only go 51 knots. But if you consider the fact that the minute you decide to take, let's say, torpedo acceleration, you essentially have 9.6 kilometer torps that go 56 knots. I mean, that's even better than Grim Yashi torpedoes, right? Um, they do a little bit less damage though, right? So that, that's something I still have to point out. But all of a sudden, the Duca d'Aosta now has essentially a, a torpedo set that can be used both up close and also for kiting away. In the past where she had to use only her guns to kite away and her agility, now she can drop torpedoes off and basically lay a bunch of like, you know, sea mines for the enemy ship that's trying to push into you. Um, and of course if they do get close, you know, these torpedoes still can work quite well up close. The other thing of course that they changed about the torpedoes is yes they made them slower, right? It used to be 66 knot torpedoes, now they are 51 or 56 with torpedo acceleration. But the one thing that makes them really scary is the fact that they've dropped the um, torpedo detectability down to 1 kilometers from 1.4 kilometers. What that means is if you don't use torpedo acceleration, the enemy ship only has 7.06 seconds to react to torpedoes. And with torpedo acceleration, they have 6.4 seconds to react to those torpedoes. So that's pretty scary because, you know, if you think about it, 6 seconds isn't even enough sometimes to get your rudder shifted if you're on, a say, a battleship or something like that. So it's kind of a scary thing. Like, these are no joke. These things really are very, very capable of um, doing damage now, these torpedoes. And they're a, a weapon set that you can use in a lot more scenarios than you could um, before with the 4.5 kilometer set. So how does this change my take on the Duca d'Alista so far? Um, well yesterday I said, you know, in my opinion that yeah, she's a good ship, you know, uh, requires a certain play style, requires the right kind of player to play her, um, and you know, overall I still found her to be relatively balanced, 
today, you know, her difficulty level has dropped, in my opinion, from something that required more skilled play to something that just basically, like, pretty much anybody can just pick up. And if they kind of know what they're doing, they should be able to do quite well with her. I just, I don't know. I, I'm kind of exasperated by Wargaming. Um, because, really, like, this power creep and... It's just not stopping. Like, every new ship that comes out is power creeped. It just has to be better now for them, uh, you know, over the last ship. And especially their premium ships, you know, it's like, it's like, this has almost become something that they have to do. Like, for example, like, if you're watching this last engagement that I have, um, I wouldn't have been able to get torpedoes onto that buy until I got much, much closer. But, you know, with these longer range sets, okay, sure, I'll just toss a couple and surprise, you know, torpedoes. And then, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just very, very much at a loss for words these days about these things that Wargaming keep doing with their ships. Um, you know, I think that, I'm not sure if they realize it, but I'm definitely starting to get ever greater feelings that they're just, they're pushing pay to win more, they're pushing the whole um, power creep more, you know, where every single ship line is going to be better than the last one, so... You know, take from this what you will, but this is just another indication in the long line of things they've done recently that's just giving off these really, really bad vibes for me. Anyways, you know, tier 6 cruiser in a tier 8 battle got a pretty solid amount of damage. Uh, yes, I know a lot of that damage did come from that battleship that I killed off, so eh. Um, anyways, good, good damage numbers overall. Base experience was good. Uh, credit gain was good. Alright, anyways, moving on from this, what do you all think? Um, do you like the direction that Wargaming is going with this game right now in terms of the way they are implementing ships? Um, do you like what they're doing in terms of this power creep that where you know every new ship comes out? It's pretty much got to be better than the last one. And especially what do you think about premium ships getting these you know huge buffs from when they were pretty balanced to this where it's like you know all of a sudden the ship is pretty much going to become the best tier 6 cruiser in the game. Um, what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Aside from all that, take care, have a good one, and I'll talk to all of you again soon.